So this is the Voyager camera that I'm going to install into my Airstream right there. The reason I'm installing the uh, Voyager over the Furion or the Halo View, few things. One is if we look at uh, the size of the camera, it's a substantially smaller. Some people want that big screen. I don't. Um, I've also created an easier way to mount this for me in my particular vehicle. And I've used this in the past. I've had it on a 2015 as well as a 2018 Lance travel trailer. And in both the 2015, which I still own, and it's 2022, and in the 2018, which I owned until a few months ago. Um, so the 2018 worked for over four years flawlessly. The 2015 has been working for over seven years flawlessly. And I've also never had any delay with them. As I've reviewed the Furions and the Halo Views, I've seen some people talk about a little bit of a delay, maybe half a second delay to the camera. Others have talked about having to replace them after a few years. And I haven't really seen that with the Voyagers, at least in my experience. And also, I've used those a lot. I've taken them across country, um, taken them off grid. They've survived very, very well. So I decided to stick with this same camera and it fits in my uh, profile in terms of, the profile of my truck well in terms of the now, screen. In both of my Lance travel trailers, way up in this area here on the back of the trailer, at the top, traditionally where you see these is where those are mounted. Some people want them there. And of course, with the air stream, it's very expensive to replace any of these panels. I don't want to have to replace any of the panels and hit something up high but up there the dilemma was it worked great for backing in but it didn't work so well for traveling down the road and so what i'm going to do is put it and mount it right above this uh, uh illumination light for my license plate here and when i put it above this illumination light up in this area right here it's going to be closer to the height of my truck so it's going to give me more of a wide angle view of the road behind me and hopefully it catches some higher things there as well. But when I'm backing in slowly, I don't mind having to stop and get out and take a look. I don't have that same luxury when I'm traveling down the interstate at 70 miles per hour and thinking about passing the you know tractor trailer that's going 54 in front of me. So I wanna know what traffic is behind me and what's coming and if it's safe to do that. And that's why I'm gonna switch it to a spot right above here. First reason, other reason is I can hide any new holes in my Airstream then. I can hide it right behind the gasket that hooks that illumination light on, and I don't wanna to have to put any new holes in this metal that I might decide, ah, I didn't really like that spot later. But first thing we're gonna do is test it out. We're gonna get it hooked up. I'll show you how I do that, and then we're gonna test it and see if we do indeed want it there or not. Now, as you start by removing this cover over the light, there are three screws. There's one on the top here, there's one on the bottom on this side and one on the bottom on this side, all Phillips head, as most things in the Airstream are, very simple to take. Now, once you get this cover off uh, and you get this light cover off from the back, and this is a 2007 Airstream, you can see it had a lot of rust on the top there. I've cleaned some of it up, um, but I'm probably going to come through that area with my uh, wire as I connect it with my positive and my negative. But it then leaves you this plate here. And so here's where the one, two, three screws were. Now we're gonna take out these one, two, and take that plate off. I shot another video where I explained how I determined that this was okay back here. I'm getting 12 volts to this light, which is good. And some modern trucks that have LED lights, they don't send a full 12 volts to the back. So you wanna check that and make sure you don't need an adapter. Um, in my case, I don't need an adapter, but there's only one red wire coming in here as we see here in a little bit. These are both um, negative grounds essentially to this plate. Um, I tested that out with my multimeter. I'll show you, 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 I'll link the video so you can take a look and see how I did that and became certain that this plate was grounded. Indeed, this plate is grounded. So that's where I'm gonna hook my negative wire for my camera to is right look there. Here we can see there's the plate. There's that one positive wire coming in and this does have just a little bit of traction on it so I can pull that out and get just a little bit of distance. I don't want to pull too aggressively. I don't want to break anything. Just want to give myself a little bit of space. There we go. Just enough that I can have two ends so I can put a new wire on this end, make that red wire a little longer and then link that to my camera as well as back to the other end of the wire that I'll cut here. And so now if you look there, I've got maybe two inches. Uh, uh, I might try to squeeze just a little more if I can, but that should give me enough that I can go ahead and crimp a couple wire connectors on there and then heat them up with the heat gun to shrink wrap them. So I have a nice good connection. This thing here, I've made two exposed wires and we're gonna go ahead and crimp those together um, and then heat shrink them. Now, one of the 
couple things I'm gonna do here after I've completed is I'm giving this pretty good tug. Can't really pull those back out at all because before I heat shrink them, I wanna make sure that when I shove this in there, if I need to get it back out, this is my connection and that's not gonna come apart. That felt pretty good. One of the things I've done here, if you look, I've gone ahead, I've started my truck up, I've turned on the lights. So you can see all the marker lights are on and indeed my illumination light is on here as well. So I put the screw back in to check the ground and I just temporarily, I'll show you that here in a second, just temporarily kind of linked this red wire back in to make sure I had signal going all the way through it. Again, indeed I do. So far I've added this little extension piece, I temporarily, and I crimped this end and I haven't heat shrunk it on there, but I've crimped it and I will heat shrink it on there in just a minute. Um, I went ahead and attached this piece, which gives me an extension here. Um, it makes this just a little bit longer. I've added this wire to add a little bit longer extension. And now what I can do is I know this will work as a ground. I can go ahead and temporarily hook up my camera to make sure that I have power coming. I'll show you what I've done here for temporary check it out. So I've taken the positive wire from my camera. So this is my camera and inside this black sheet, it's got the negative wire, the black and the positive. I've hooked the positive with a temporarily with a wire nut to the positive from the light and the positive. So this is the positive coming out of the light. I'm sorry. This is the positive coming out of the light right here. This long one, this shorter one is the positive feeding in uh, that's hot. And then from the black wire, I've taken it and connected it to the screw right here. So you see the black wire goes from here up to the screw. So that should be grounded along with my light. What I'm gonna do is go start my truck up, turn on the power. And what we should get is power um, to the light. And that should also be delivering power then uh, to the camera down here. So I've turned the lights on, which means uh, we have power coming here. And that also means we should, and we're grounded here, which also means we should have power and be grounded. Uh, so we should have power to the camera and we should be grounded to this screw and plate right here as well. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and see if I can go pair the camera now and that'll so tell before me. Before I pair my camera here, I wanna show you, this is my previous camera. And if we look at the new camera, it's pretty much looks identical size wise, same buttons, etc. This one's a little bit newer version, but <clears throat> I mounted it to this uh, piece of poplar and then I put some Velcro on the bottom edge and front edge of it. And then on my uh, Alpine radio, there's a free edge here. This is a floating system and I've made that so that it'll mount right like that when I drive. And so it sticks there. When I take it off, I Velcro it. And from my driving position, what I like is it's there. It's not, this is right here is about the visual I see. So you can see it doesn't cover up anything on my dash at all. Um, it's tilted a little bit forward. I usually plan it right about there. And then the other thing you can see is right here is my tire pressure monitoring, uh, my tire pressure monitoring system. So I have all those things in place where I can see them and use them effectively. Like I said, this is the one that I currently have for the Lance 1995. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this one and hook up this other one. First, we're going to see if it will pair. Pairing here is a pretty simple process. I plugged it in and then you can see it says, uh, I don't know if I can focus that in or not, but it says press and hold pair button for five seconds, then apply power to camera. So if we go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead, we'll turn our camera off by turning our lights to the off to auto here. So it's daytime. So my lights are now off. So there's no power going to the camera. So we'll follow this in the order that they told us to do it. So then we'll go ahead and up here is the select pair. And we'll go 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. It's now trying to pair. We'll turn the lights on. So we should have power to the camera now. And we'll see if this go ahead, goes ahead and works. So I think this is the reason uh, we hooked everything up. Problem was we didn't hook in to the camera. Rookie move. Okay, now we've got everything plugged in. We tried to do this once before. This time we actually plugged the camera in. Very important before you just set it here, which is what I did, but everything's plugged in now. Let's see if we can uh, go ahead and pair this up. So here again, we're wired up to the camera right there. You can see I've got power coming on. We're gonna try this one more time. 
Now, the first time I did this, I <laughs> forgot to plug this piece in and couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. And then I tried several different things and I couldn't get it to work, including hooking the camera directly up to the battery. Now, one of the things about this camera is that you've got to pair it while the, uh, you gotta start the pair process while there's no power to the camera and then turn power on to the camera. So we're gonna go to the truck. See here, it says, press and hold the pair button for five seconds, and then apply power to the camera. So first thing we're gonna do, go back to the auto position. It's daytime. I can tell looking over there that the lights are off. So now we're back here. I'm gonna press the pair button. Oops, I gotta hold it for five seconds. I'm gonna do it this other way. So we'll press the, here is the pair button. So we're gonna, it says select pair. We're gonna hold it 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. There we go. Pairing has definitely started. We're definitely a few seconds into this process. Now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna turn my headlights to on. And let's see, oh, look at that. Hey, and there's the back of my garage. So now what I've done is used some painter's tape to kind of hold the bracket on. Little piece of wood here resting on the box that the camera came in, just to kind of keep it mounted where I can see. And I'm gonna check and see if this is about the position I want it in, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and see what that looks now like. Now my vehicle started up. You can see instead of it saying pair, it says no signal. As I turn the, cam the lights on, the camera should come on and we should pick up a signal here shortly. There's the signal. And now what you can see is the back of my garage, the chair where I was sitting working on this. And um, what I'm gonna do is place a couple of objects. Now I can see right here in the corner, one part of my garage door. So I'm gonna place a couple of objects, short objects on the ground, right at either corner of the bumper to see what that looks like. Quite too many holes. So this is my light cover. I drilled, it's roughly three quarters there. I rounded it out just a little bit just to make a little bit more space uh, to get the grommet in there that I need to get in there. And then if you look here, this hole that was already here, I notched just a little bit just to make room for my wire there. So I've got this grommet in here. Now that theoretically takes a three quarter inch bit. I used an 11 16 just a little smaller. There it is attached to the back of the light cover. And then if we follow it up, we can see here it goes to the camera. And <clears throat> right here, what I did, was I created just this little notch right here where there was already a hole and that will accommodate my wire there after I link these together. The next thing I did with the plate lined up, as you can see, I put this extra hole right here to attach my ground wire and I drilled right through this plate as well as the bracket behind it. And then I roughed this area up just a little bit that you can see to make sure I get a good connection there. Now for my bracket, I've attached some sticky 3M tape here. Um, I'll put that maybe in the link. I've cut out a hole right there and I've marked, if you can see it here, it's very faded but right there. You can see the hole and then I split that, made it level and I'm going to put that right over that hole there and this is going to be the spot where I'm going to use this not only as a uh, temporary placeholder but also kind of as a gasket behind okay. it. So here's my wiring configuration achieved. Now I've stuck this piece on, it's just sticking, but I'll we'll put a couple screws through here and why this uh, tape, this VHB tape, and I'll put the link into that will act as a gasket for me. So that should be good. Now, if we look down here, we can see here's my red wire, my positive wire coming out. And of course my plate was the ground. So as we get to here, the positive wire comes back in there. This other positive wire takes off to my camera. And then the ground from the camera comes back and hooks into the back of the plate right there. And so this gasket should cover all that up as I go ahead and uh, put this back in. Mark, but I forgot a step before I gotta show you. So you also have to drill through both of these plates to create a hole so you can thread that wire in. So we went ahead and did that as well. Now I gotta reconnect my negative wire to my ground and I should be able to put this all back together. Now, what you can see again, this is the wire coming out to the back of the plate from the camera. This is the wire leading down to the camera. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of push this in and up where there's space up there in the insulation, just like that. Okay. So there it is finished up at night. Now I have it 
This looks a little lopsided, but I have, I've just set it in there. I haven't screwed it in yet. As you can see, points pretty much right to the C and special. So pretty darn close to dead center and gives me a nice view in the back, just like I showed you. I've actually adjusted a little bit, so I see a little bit more on the ground, but uh, uh, up high, I'll have to be cautious when I'm backing into places, but um, I can always have my wife get out and take a look or I can stop and go slowly more concerned is my safety heading down the road and the way this is positioned it gives me a great view heading down the road now i'll show you i'm going to go ahead and just take that out so it's hard to tell but that's actually uh that's airstream right there this is actually the tape right here and right here um it'll probably get a little dusty lose some of its stick right there but that's okay right now i've just got it stuck on I theoretically could just leave that sticker there so that I could take it off someday, but I'd hate for this to jiggle and come free going down the road. Um, but I might try it that way for a little while, see how it goes. Okay, so there it is, final install, without any new screws or holes in the skin. Um, little hole right here in the top of this guy right there um, to get the wire down. Little hole through the plate, the grounding plate in the back that hooks into the license plate. But other than that, no new holes in the skin of this Airstream. And I was able to go ahead and get this mounted, um, get it mounted in this position where I like to use it. Now, if you're somebody that carries bikes on the back of your hitch there, you may not want this position, or if you tow something else, you may not want this position. But for me, it was worth not having holes in the skin to go ahead and mount this this way, using power from the illumination light for the license plate. And you can see what that looks like there. Very clean look. You can see it's centered at the C and special. We're almost right straight up at that C right there. So we're centered nicely. We've got a good view. Should help with a lot of safety when backing up, but especially when heading down the highway. The reasons I um, hooked the monitor up to my wife's car in the garage here. One of the reasons I wanted this camera is if you look, I'm gonna go ahead and lift my right leg now. Right leg goes up, down. I'm gonna lift it now, up, down. So this is instantaneous feedback. So what's going on behind me is live. One of the complaints I've seen, particularly with the halo views, sometimes with the Furions is a delay. I really don't need the big giant screen. This is enough for me um, to see what's going on behind me. Gives me adequate view and makes the fact that it's real time feedback and that I've had the Voyagers in the past is why I selected That's this it. one. For the install of a camera without any new holes in the skin of my Airstream. Now, if I find, I'll keep an eye on this monitor. If I find it's coming loose back here with this VHB tape, what I'll do is go ahead and I'll save the screws. I'll drill the holes and go ahead and mount this bracket in there as well. But I can tell you that tape is pretty darn sturdy right now and I don't foresee that uh, going anywhere right now. As far as final positioning goes, I'm gonna hook my monitor in and show you this, but you can see my heat gun here, the bright yellow heat gun. And if I put my foot there, my size 11 foot, what you can see is why I'm just probably a little bit less than a foot away from the back edge of the hitch to where my foot is and where the heat gun is. So I'm gonna go plug the monitor in in my truck We'll take a look at that and you'll see what that shows us there. Look at the bottom edge of the monitor right there. You can just barely see that heat gun. So I know if I back something right up to the edge, I'm approximately one foot so away. This is my finalized setup for my camera that Bluetooth with the cam with the, uh, or, I'm sorry, for my monitor that Bluetooth with my camera in the back. If you look here, I've set a brick and you can sort of see the corner of my bumper, but I've set this brick right off the left corner of my bumper here. We're going to go back and take a look at that, but what you'll see is it's approximately a foot off the rear end of my bumper and you can see that brick now right you see there. here. I haven't moved that brick. You can see it's about a foot roughly off the back end of my bumper there. And so I'm visualizing all that in line here. Um, I'm gonna move this camera, this brick over here about a foot off the back edge of the bumper. So right, right there, we're about a foot off the back edge of the bumper. And we'll go take a look and see what that shows us right there. So I haven't moved that brick from where I placed it on the other side and you can see it's about a foot off the back edge of my bumper. Um, but what I wanted to show you here was that I didn't mount, mount this with any new drill holes. I put it on with this tape, and as you can see, I'm flexing it and pulling it here. You can see 
with that tape, my Airstream actually moves with it. It's been through a few rainstorms now, hasn't really loosened up a bit. Um, and of course, I, I'm pretty confident uh, that this tape, and I'll put a link to that, um, that that tape's gonna hold that in that nice center position pretty darn well. So, so I hope you enjoyed this install of the Voyager camera without any new holes in the uh, sheet metal in the skin of the Airstream. Very nice that we were able to do this without any new holes in the aluminum. If you like this, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Go ahead and comment. I'd be interested to know what you think or any tips or pointers you might have for an install.